I just got an order for a big epoxy table project for a customer, but Houston, we have a problem. I don't have a big enough workbench to build it on. I'll need to start on the customer project in 7 days and with the timber prices these days I have to build the workbench from reclaimed slash free wood. Hi, I'm Jesper and I'm building a workbench from old horse shed poles, pallet wood, old chipboards, an old dining table and a log I found in my backyard. I need to finish it in 7 days and keep the cost as close to nothing as possible. It is winter in Denmark, and I am inside preparing for the build. I found this old video about a simple workbench build from DIY for knuckleheads. Let's check it out! It's gonna be tough, sturdy, cheap. Since I'm kind of a knucklehead myself, I'll try to follow the basic principles from this build. I haven't got any plans for the build except my own little drawing here. I'll start the build by making the legs. Two pieces screw together to form one solid post. I have a couple of big old poles from a horse yet, and I think they'll be more than solid enough on their own. So I'll just cut them to length on my miter saw. I'll need to connect the legs with a rail, and the video suggests not just bolting it on the side of the legs, but cutting off half of the thickness of the leg for the rail to rest on, in both directions. Ah, that is too complicated. Now before you say, oh, that's too complicated, it's really simple. He suggests to make some cuts with a circular saw and then chisel the material out. But my legs are a bit bigger than my circular saw can handle, so I'll start the cross cut on my miter saw. And then I'll reach deep down into the ancient ways of woodworking and I'll find a handsaw to remove the rest of the material. And before I know it, I have four posts ready. Now I'll need some long pieces of wood for the rails, and I have this long horse yet pole. It is way too thick and way too long. After some denailing, I decided to split the pole on my bandsaw. Yeah, I have turned my bandsaw over and put it on rails. I guess you can call it a sliding bandsaw. It is no problem splitting the pole in half, and without a bandsaw, I probably would have used a handsaw, or maybe a table saw, or my chainsaw or splitting it with an axe and wedges. Yes, you can do that. I'm turning the whole thing upside down for assembly and I'll glue and screw the rails together and I'll mount the legs on them with more glue and more screws. Next thing we need to do is add some extra support for our bench top. And you do that by adding these noggins. Let us fit in like that. For the support, I'll need to go diving into my reclaimed wood pile, and I found some usable rafters from pallets and shipping boxes. I found an old beat up dining table at the roadside, and I'm hoping I can use the table base support for support of the lower part of my bench. It's a little long, but I'll just fix that with my good old handsaw. I made the legs a little short so there's space for some casters. This is so heavy, there's no way I can move it around without them later. Alright, I think it's time to get this monster on its feet.
Hello? Jasper, my old Scandinavian skellywag. How are you, mate? It's Shane Conlon. Who? I don't know anyone with that name. It's Uncle Knackers from DIY Wife and Knuckleheads. You knucklehead. <laughs> oh, that's Shane. If I'm right, I think you're building one of my projects right now. Yeah, I'm building it right now, but, but how could you possibly know that? Didn't you just leave me a comment saying that you are literally building it right now? Yeah, I did, but it, it's it's really a bad sign. Yeah, look, I just wanted to offer my help to... Sorry, sorry, I, got, I gotta go. What? Interesting guy. Danish. The workbench is looking more like a workbench now, but somehow some of the support pallet wood sticks out a bit, so I'll need to adjust some of them with my hand plane. And there you go! It is time to mount the sheet that will make the top surface. And I have this sheet of foam ply I'll try to mount on the base. I noticed that the Mr. Fancy Knuckle DIY guy also glued his top on, but I'll avoid the glue and just mount it with screws. This is in case I'll need to change the top later. Instead of just having one big shelf under the table, I'm planning on filling it up with some drawers. So the first step is mounting some sides, so I have something to mount drawers on. I have these old chipboards I got for free from a demolition in my dad's barn. Using a circular saw on old dusty chipboards indoors creates a lot of dust so I switched to a handsaw for a few cuts. Before long I had four vertical sides mounted under the table. You may have been thinking why is that guy not wearing some proper eye protection? Here's why. This is my current collection of safety glasses. But no more. Because SafeStyle from Australia have sent me these three pairs of safety glasses. I have never looked cooler in my own humble opinion. They ship all over the world and if you want to check them out there is a link in the description. The weather finally got a little better and I have moved outside to cut off the old chip bolts. All the sides of the drawers are 22 cm in height. So I might just cut off all the bolts into 22 cm strips. I do that with a track saw and a spacer that is 22.1 cm long. I can now cut all the strips to length on my miter saw that's got a proper dust collection. From there it's just making a lot of boxes. For the bottom of the drawers I have some sheets of plywood from shipping boxes. I could have cut a groove and slided the bottom in, but that takes a few centimeters off the usable height inside the drawer. Instead, I just glue and brad nail it directly to the bottom and then I'll trim it with a router and a flush trim bit. Easy peasy. I'm not worried that the bottom will fall off because the old IKEA sliders I'm mounting will attach at the bottom, not the sides. So the plywood bottom will rest safely on the sliders. I'm definitely not a cabinet maker, but somehow I managed to mount 10 drawers under the workbench. I'm not a big fan of the chipboard look, so I'm trying to come up with a plan to make them disappear. I could paint them, but that would just look like painted chipboards. So while I'm waiting for creativity to strike, I am going to Instagram. My mate Tim from the UK is trying to split a log into cookies with a handsaw. Mm. It's actually fairly easy to cut, there's just a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah! This just gave me an idea for the workbench. I could cover the drawers with cookies. I have a handsaw and I have a lock. I'm going to do my own splitting. 
Hey, but wait. It took him four hours. And after all that work, it's gonna take me days to cook, to cut all those cookies. Remember Jesper? You're the guy with the sliding bandsaw. You've got to use that to your advantage. Then I suddenly remembered, I have a sliding bandsaw. What if I could mount the log vertically in the saw and use that? top little project. Yeah, so I'll just see if Uncle Nagas has some final words of wisdom I can use on my workbench. I've left a list in the description box down below of the materials and some of the dimensions wait, for wait, this what? project. That, that sounded like plants. Did you have plants for this on your website all the time? <laughs>